Yeah, well, um, social media wasn't really in existence back in 2003, but they did have emails. So the Chinese didn't really take this too seriously. I mean, China's got some pretty heavily polluted places. Maybe it was, I think it was probably a lot worse in 2003. Um, so respiratory disease is, and a high rate of smoking. So respiratory disease is not exactly a stranger to China. So if you get a little cluster of a few cases of pneumonia that don't seem to respond to treatment, that's probably not a big deal in a country of over a billion people. But there was this email that went around kind of a chat list of epidemiologists, and they took it pretty seriously. Uh, so when somebody showed up in Hong Kong who, who then got really sick from pneumonia, uh, like the full bore panic uh, came out. And of course, they blamed the Chinese. In this case, it was the city of Guangzhou. Uh, near Hong Kong and not uh, Wuhan, uh, and it spread to um, Singapore, Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, <clears throat> Vietnam, uh, Canada, really nowhere else. There were like one or two cases around the rest of the world. It was seen as incredibly infectious. Like, for example, there was a guy in an elevator and he touched you know, the button to get down to the lobby. Mm -hmm. And then some hours later, somebody else got into the elevator and got infected. Well, that's pretty infectious. But there was an amazing accidental experiment that was done in China in a hospital in Guangzhou. The AIDS ward had some empty space. Oh, this, this, is, so cra this is crazy. They put the SARS. <laughs> yes, it's, it's the wow. funniest thing ever. Uh, so, Go ahead, sorry. so the AIDS ward... Um, uh, had some empty space. So, of course, they put the SARS patients on the AIDS ward. Now, think about this. The AIDS patients who had, they were seriously ill AIDS patients, like they had opportunistic infections, they were clearly immune suppressed, are put onto a ward with the most in infectious disease at that time known to man before this new coronavirus came along. Uh, this, this paper is very thorough, and it noted that they they kept the SARS and the AIDS patients on separate sides of the floor, but in between the two sides, there was a corridor used by the staff, which had open windows on both sides. So there was free airflow through the entire floor. Plus, there was like a little uh, waiting room that, that the patients could mingle in. And in one case, an AIDS patient was accidentally put into a room with SARS patients. So they did everything possible to infect the AIDS patients. And anybody can guess that in the end, there were zero cases of SARS in the AIDS patients. So how can this incredibly infectious virus not infect immune suppressed people? That, that makes no sense at all. Right. 